That felt really good. I don't say it as much as I used to. Thank you, Kenny, for the kind introduction. And thank you, Marilyn Fulbright, for hosting me at your table tonight. I really appreciate it. I left College Station on January 22nd to drive north. I came through Dallas on my way through Texas, on to Oklahoma, and to Missouri. And I arrived in Columbia, Missouri at noon on the 23rd of January. I opened the door of the car, it was five degrees. <laughs> I said to myself, what have I done? <laughs> it was uh, breathtaking, to say the least. But I've been able to come back to Texas a few times since my uh, arrival in Missouri. It's always good to be back close to Aggie Land and among my friends, mm -hmm. my good friends, Aggies. Thank you. This will be a personal talk tonight. I may need this, so bear with me. I've thought about this talk for a long time since Kenny and I discussed this uh, last year, uh, coming here. Uh, I did call you, Kenny, and I said, you still want me to come? And he, he did say nicely, he did, and I appreciate that. This is a interesting mixture of emotions we all feel tonight. Muster is a solemn time but also a time for us to get together with good friends, enjoy some food, mostly barbecue, and talk about times past. I was so pleased tonight to see the scholarship recipients, and John Michael, thanks for making the bow tie. <laughs> Very appreciated. But most of all, tonight we're here to discuss what it means to be an Aggie. As I heard the recipients of the scholarships announced, you may have heard too that each one had their favorite tradition. And I must tell you, probably thousands of times during my time as Ames president, I was asked by students, what's your favorite tradition? That's a hard question to answer for me. I had to come back and I say, I don't have any one favorite, I have many favorite traditions. It depends, it depends. Muster's incredible, but so is Silver Taps. Elephant Walk, what a joy. The Aggie Ring, a fantastic symbol of our unity. And on and on and on. They're all great, great things. Traditions basically do one thing. They keep us together. They remind us of how special our times were at Texas a and together. So, when I got through the process late last year of talking with friends in Missouri, they sort of asked me about, well, can you really walk away from Aggie Land? And I said, sir, I don't have to. This stays here. You can't forget where you came from, who you are. And I am, and I will be a Texas Aggie forever. Mm -hmm. This remind, reminds every day happened to you, though. Just because I'm in Columbia, Missouri most of the time now doesn't mean Aggie Land isn't around me. <clears throat> Saturday, I went to a baseball game at Columbia, Missouri. Ran into a couple there visiting. One's a young man from the a and System Campus in Commerce, Texas, starting a new job there as a GA in athletics with his girlfriend fighting Texas Aggie. We got a picture together. I receive tweets every day, Facebook postings every day, emails every day from Aggie friends, always reminding me of how special Aggies are and what a special place Aggie Land is. So I'm never very far away from Aggie Land. Tonight, though, I want to take you on a personal journey, one that perhaps I uniquely have had as Aiden's president for five years. 
bear with me. This is gonna be a hard talk for me to do. But let me start by saying the following. My number is 73. That's not my class year, not my age yet. That's my number though. What is it, you might ask. From my first day as interim president of Texas A&M, June 15, 2009, to my last day as president, January 13, 2014, 73 students died. 73 young Aggies died. Now, that number may seem like a big number. If you look at the demographics of Texas A&M, it's not. Given the age group, given our size, those are things that are expected. Doesn't make it easier. No 19 year old should die. Nonetheless, those deaths were a big part of my life there and are now becoming a big part of my life at Mizzou. These young people died from many causes. Car wrecks being the largest number, but not the majority. Natural deaths from cancer, operations gone wrong, asthma, other accidents, even suicides have happened. Now, I did not know personally most of those 73 students, but I did know some. It was and it is hard to deal with that. And especially hard if I knew that particular student. Unless I was on travel, I went to every single Silver Taps while being president of AM. I stood up for them on the Attic Plaza, along with thousands of other Aggies in the dark, not talking just experiencing that profound emotion we all feel for those 30 minutes. I stood up for them in September heat, the January cold, and April rains. I was always startled in spite of myself at first volley. It always startled me. My eyes were always moist when, play, when I heard the playing of sober taps. Once to the north, once to the south, and once to the west. I walked silently back to the home of the president, other students, my head down, subdued, thinking about a precious soul, no longer with us. My actual role in dealing with these deaths occurred earlier than server taps, though. While being told of a death, I would reach out to the families telephone call, a card, whatever I could do to get to them, expressing my sympathy, my concern, and offering the support of the university for them in this difficult time. I showed up at 9.30, an hour before Silver Taps began, to meet with the families. Initially, this was going on at the Sainers Core Center, while the MSC was closed, and more recently, back in the MSC in the Stark Galleries. It's an incredible thing to do, to be there with the families who come to mourn the loss of their child. I watched members of our traditions council talk quietly to these families, tell them about the great tradition that Silver Taps is show them the Benjamin Knox print they would receive courtesy of those among us who donated towards that cause. Get a copy of the battalion for that day showing a picture of and talking about their son or their daughter. I would then walk with them to Emmett Plaza and especially for those who were not Aggies themselves when their child was the first to go to Texas A&M to see the shock on their faces as they walked into the plaza and saw thousands, thousands, standing silently at their side. 
They would then go to the chairs grouped in front of Sully's statue and sit down, and the ceremony would begin. The slow cadence of the RVs coming from the north, distant at first, closer and closer. The RVs forming up in front, then the volleys, the birds fly. But again, surrounded by silence. Let me tell you about a few of these. I won't use names, but these are the ones I really, really have etched in my heart. A young man lived by himself off campus. I could tell from the notes I received, the son of a single mother. No Aggie history at all. When I walked into the course of that night, she was easy to find. She was all by herself. That was the first and only time I ever saw a person come by themselves. Often you'd see 20, 30 parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts and uncles, close family friends would come together to support each other. She was by herself. Tears on her cheek. She wasn't an Aggie. Didn't know much about us. All she knew was her son loved Texas A&M and wanted to be there. She let him go. And now he was gone. I talked to her for a few minutes. We had already communicated before that night. But I got I moved aside and let the students from the council come forward and talk to her. One knew her son and spoke to her about him. And I watched her face. I watched the agony there slowly begin to change. You see, her grief wasn't her grief anymore. It was our grief too. One fall, as you may know, the midnight yell closest to Halloween is always out of fun. <laughs> the students wear costumes oftentimes. They're planning to go to parties for midnight yell and really have a good time together. And I walked into Kyle Field that night. It didn't take me long to run across a student I knew very well. We had had many, many different encounters before that night. And I was drawn to him right away, though, because his disguise was special. He was dressed like me. <laughs> Gray hair, a fake mustache, a dark suit and a bow tie. We had a good time that night. We took a selfie. In January, he died. In February, I was there several times. It was hard, very hard. You see, I had the picture with me that night of him and I taking together. That was tough. Two freshmen from Houston went back home one night to serve their community and their former high school to excite those high school kids about Texas A&M. But they had to get back to campus for work the next day. They're driving back along 290, only to be hit head on by a drunk driver on the wrong side of the freeway. I knew one very well, young freshman in the Corps, a fantastic young lady, full of joy and love for Texas a &M. Now, out there, such potential, such joy, gone. Different times, two football players. I knew them both. Fine young men, great personalities, great love for our university, great camaraderie with our team. It was special to see their teammates come to Silver Taps that night and sit with the families and share the grief. The last one I'll mention, though, was my hardest. A promising young man attended Texas A&M as undergraduate, 
I gave him his diploma. He then stayed for graduate school. Two years later, he died. That was hard for me because I taught him in Sunday school. Very hard for me. So, we're here tonight to think about our lost loved ones. Perhaps shed a tear, but also think about the joy they brought into our lives and the lives of others. The special times we had together, those unique moments carved out. Some were young, some were in the prime of life, some in the twilight years. But guess what? They're all Aggies, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're all Aggies. So, what's special? What's special about us? Does muster make us special? Silver taps, the Aggie ring, midnight yell, the twelfth man. That's part of it. That's part of it. We're defined by those things in many respects. But let me just talk a little bit about the five years I spent in Aggie land, and especially about our commencements. Who's here been to an Aggie graduation? Where's everybody? I went to a few of them. Maybe you don't know this if you weren't the last one. But you were. Over my time as NS president, I graduated over 56,000 students. 13% of all Aggies have passed by me since time began. 13% of all Aggies in history have passed by me. Incredible. May graduation was the hardest thing I ever did physically. <laughs> Seven ceremonies, it's about over two and a half days. Lots of handshakes. Standing on your feet. As the anchor for photography, I couldn't move. You stand 26 hours in one spot, see how you feel. But. At each graduation, it was special to me. You know, easy to become a robot up there, just automatically sticking out a tube and shaking a hand. Easy to do that. I couldn't let it happen to me. So I learned what to do. First of all, I would listen very carefully when their name was called. I was the first person they came to. And I called them by name if I possibly could. A few 40 characters long, I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> the most I could get. Call them by name. But I watched their faces. That three seconds as they came to work, I watched their faces. The emotions never ceased to amaze me. I saw it all. Surprise. <laughs> A few of you were surprised, I bet. Surprise. Joy, of course. Many were just elated to be there. But you saw uncertainty. I even saw fear. As you know, the month before graduation, hundreds would come to me and say, Dr. Lofton, I don't want to graduate. I love this place too much. I want to stay. I would say, no. Go to your parents. Get out of here. <laughs> but that gave me a connection to every one of them. My first couple of May graduations were killers, though. I learned right away that my hands limit was 4,000. 4,000 handshakes, it became a piece of hamburger. <laughs> the friction of that many handshakes literally made my hands raw. I was desperate for a solution, so at my third May graduation, I began to say to them, besides being gentle, I'm open for alternatives to handshakes. How about a hug, a high five, or a fist bump? I regretted the fist bumps. That Aggie ring can cut right into your hand. But guess what? The hug count got high. By last May, well over 2,000 of them hugged me. Special moments. In December, my last graduation, 500 took selfies with me. 
It delayed graduation by an entire hour, and my staff was furious. But I said, heck, it's my last graduation. I can do this. But that was a hard one, too. My last graduation was tough. We did it one day. This was, this was last December. One day, three graduations, back to back. Hard day, long day. But that last one, I left the stage with them and saw them off as I always did. I cried. I never just cried. I see many things during graduations. I'm not sure you all can notice what happened on the stage some of the time. Uh, strange things. Cartwheels, mm -hmm. dances. I got a few Kingsburys too. Did y'all remember the 2012 game in Tuscaloosa? On national TV, nice play. Clint Kingsbury came by and whapped someone in the butt. <laughs> I had a few come by me after that and go, whoop. I've had booty bumps, chest bumps, bear hugs, you name it. But all in joy. To see them graduate was so special. I mention this to you because I have such fond memories of my time in Aggieland. And it's really all sort of one thing. If you follow me at all, on Twitter, you know my favorite hashtag now. I say it's all about students, because it is. Our students, and I must say also my current students in the zoo, have a lot in common. They're bright people. They're intelligent, very, 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 very smart people. They love their university. I don't mind telling you that. Every day I ask kids, are you happy? And they say, yes, I'm happy. But more than that, they have an attitude that absolutely is precious. You see, Aggies believe, they believe they can do anything. I would say about them quite often that our students don't know it can't be done. They don't know it can't be done. At my age, I've tried many things and I've failed. And you build up scar tissue after a while and you don't even try. But these young people, they will do more than try. They'll succeed where I wouldn't even start. It makes it feel very special. You see, if you spend your time watching the media every day, talking about the news of the world. What do you hear? It's all bad, isn't it? You hear about avalanches on Mount Everest. You hear about fairies turning over and capsizing, <laughs> killing hundreds. It's all bad news. These kids, these Aggies don't have that problem. See, they don't read the newspapers. <laughs> They don't watch the evening news. They feed off each other. And I've been lucky to feed off them for many years. It's been incredible. Let me just take us to a conclusion here by talking about a couple of things I did every graduation. We had a convocation before the graduation uh, each year, each time rather, three times a year. And I would always say a few words to the students who were there particularly about their responsibilities. I would say to them this, when you get that diploma from me, it does a lot more than symbolize the transcript that records the courses you've taken and the grades you've earned. It does that, certainly, but much more is there. When you get that diploma from Texas A&M, it comes along with a brand and the value of our brand is big, really big. And you're inheriting that when you graduate. I would tell those graduates, you know, when you get that diploma, think about it. All those former students who came before you 
and have done great things, have built the brand, and you inherit it. You get it. That brand value is not just about professional achievement, which Aggies have much to be proud of. It's about giving back to their communities. It's about serving, not wanting. That's what Aggies do. And every one of those former students who's lived the Aggie, the Aggie code has built the brand value, and now you get it. Bang, you got it. But with that Aggie brand comes responsibility. Your job when you graduate is to build the brand's value further. That was my message of every year, every, rather every time we did our convocation. And then, if you've been to graduation, you've heard me say these words here. I added these words myself. I inherited, when I got to Texas A&M as president, I inherited a script for graduation. I messed around with it some. And in particular, I added these words I'll share with you again tonight. Pardon me if you heard them before, because many of you have, but I want to drive home my final point here with these words. After we got through with all the graduation process at the very end, I would come along and say this to them. Aggies are known not simply for the knowledge and skills they acquire by taking courses at this great university, but also for more intangible but equally important characteristics, good judgment, leadership, and a service mentality. These characteristics are part of what we call the Aggie spirit. Therefore, as your president, I'm also proud tonight, today, to certify that you carry this Aggie spirit with you as you walk out of this arena. Use it to guide your decisions in life. Use it to embrace the communities in which you will live and join your fellow Aggies in passing it on to the next generation. That was my charge to them. And I felt like that was exactly the right thing to drive home as they were about to celebrate this wonderful milestone in their lives. Now, I have to close with one final thing here. This happened on Easter Sunday, just a couple of days, just a day ago, just yesterday. I got up early Sunday morning and checked Twitter and Facebook, as I usually do in the first thing in the morning, and I had a nice note from some very special young people. You may know them, probably don't, but you may know them. a and currently has triplets enrolled. They're the hauling triplets. They're in the Corps Cadets, they're seniors this year, and they are delightful. Lily Beth, Pollyanna, and Aaron sent me a message. And I cried. I cried. I'll share it with you tonight. We had our senior dining out for the class of 2014 for the Corps Cadets, and the slideshow had many pictures of you in it. Although you weren't there in person, we know your spirit and heart were with us. We miss you here at Aggie Island, but we know God has great things for you to do in Missouri. Just don't forget how much you mean to us all here and how many hoops you get at any time your name is mentioned. Come visit as often as you can, sending Texas-sized love, hugs, and prayers your way.